And uh, so excited to get started uh, with our first webinar of the year. And thank you, Jason. I'm going to go ahead and, and give an introduction for Jason Mesa, who is the regional director for the Better Business Bureau. He's a principal spoke, spokesperson in South Texas and regional Spanish language spokesperson, maintains effective public relations education campaigns, community outreach programs, and business relationship management in his assigned territory. So the BBB or the Better Business Bureau challenges and opportunities for growth, um, or the, I'm sorry, the Better Business Bureau conducts ongoing dialogue with businesses of all sizes, assesses challenges and opportunities for growth and assists in local investigations as needed. And we all know that the Better Business Bureau has been a part of, you know, a lot of what we do as business people and have a longstanding tradition here in this community. Uh, the Better Business Bureau, serving the heart of Texas, serves over 100 counties through its headquarters in Austin and provides free business reviews on local businesses and charities to help consumers make wise purchasing decisions. And I think a lot of what uh, the Laredo Chamber does too is provide opportunities like the Better Business Bureau for people to assess uh, what they need and hopefully we can help uh, serve them and, and bridge that gap. So with that, I welcome Jason Mesa and thank you for presenting for us. Hey there, good morning. Hopefully you can hear me okay. Can you hear me okay? okay. Yes, we can. Okay, great. Well, ladies, I appreciate you. And of course, the Laredo Chamber, we do some awesome work in Laredo. I, I wish I could get there more often to have a cup of coffee and a handshake with all your businesses. Um, just know that we're active. We, of course, we're online. We're doing as much as we can, 100% remote. But on top of that, um, we love to help. I love to help wherever I need to be. Ladies, you know, with Laredo Chamber, we are happy to help and jump at any chance we get to, to offer our services. So once again, welcome, folks. Uh, appreciate you. Thanks for hanging out with us on a Wednesday morning. We're going to be quick and expedient. I have a very fast read rate. I drink lots of coffee. So if I go way too fast, uh, feel free to chat away. Tell me to hit the pause button and go back and review. I want this to be at some level um, you know, two way, a two way dialogue. If you want me to review something a little bit extra, I'd be happy to slow down and review that for you. And as well, I'll be sending the slide presentation in PDF uh, back to the chamber so they can share if you need the presentation again. I'll go ahead and start sharing my screen. Hopefully you can catch up and see that as well. Share, share, share. Can you see the screen? Okay, this is uh, the, the course of time to build consumer confidence, improving your digital reputation. I'm going to shut my, my video down right now so I can save some bandwidth. It, it kind of skips every time. So I'm going to get back to not sharing the video, but I'll be right here, um, right along with you. So there we go. Okay, so what we're here to do, hopefully you learn, you take away who we are at BBB, the power of the referral and the review. This is very important. Um, I'll talk about my dad, old school dad a lot. I'll refer to him as the old school shop owner from the 80s and 90s who didn't have to worry about their digital reputation. Um, we'll kind of refer back and forth to old school dad a couple of times. So we'll review what the power of referrals mean. Influence, this is a big I word in the room. Influence is huge. If I can teach you how to recognize influence, how to command influence. If you learn nothing else today and you just learn what influential people do, I'll be happy with that. Uh, how to engage, um, this is tough. Every business is gonna be different. I can't tell one business what to do and the next the same. It's a totally, totally separate engagement model. So we'll teach you more or less how to engage in general terms. And then social proof and social good. These are the two golden nuggets I like to uh, have our folks walk away with every presentation. Social proof and social good are two little things you can do next hour today before the end of the day to help you know boost your online reputation score review rating whatever that looks like on a separate site so we'll review those two terms at the end don't worry if you're not taking notes again i'll go ahead and send this presentation out the other direction and again we'll i'll offer my my uh, information to contact me um, i've spent 22 years in broadcast media doing pr work uh, radio tv print i've had eight years in nonprofit with goodwill with Children's Hospital here in San Antonio, and of course now with BBB. Uh, I own a very small business. I own a digital marketing freelance voiceover talent business, and I'm also a mentor with communities and schools. We call them mentors, as in guys, men helping out our, our youth in the schools. And I'm also on the American Advertising Federation Board, AAF, here in San Antonio chapter. I'm social. I've got a Twitter account. I've got a Facebook account. I'm not as active on Instagram, but on LinkedIn, you can reach out to me as well um, if you have any questions. Uh, first things first, what do we do? What is the Better Business Bureau? I see the lady in the room waving her hand, her finger at me. I'll call the BBB on you guys. Uh, we are known as the complaints, I guess. People run to BBB to complain about businesses, but no, I'll, I'll back that up and say we were born back in 1912, the same year as the Titanic. 
as a response to the truth in advertising. Uh, this is a big, big movement that happened online, uh, or actually not online, I'm sorry, in, in person. Uh, Coca-Cola has an, a poster I put on your right hand side of your screen, if you can see that. And that poster is telling people, drink more Coke, it will cure the common headache. Well, as we know, Coke doesn't do that. That was kind of a misleading tactic or an ad designed to capture more people. And it really doesn't do that. It doesn't solve the headache problem. So uh, out of that, some business owners stepped forward and said, we need to have a council, a bureau to help oversee these kinds of ads uh, free from government regulation. And thus the Better Business Bureau was born back in 1912. The man on the left is Mr. Samuel Dobbs. He actually worked at Coke and he was in the room, in the jury room when they were bringing these advertisements to light. And he was, he had an epiphany, if you will. He said, you know what, you guys are right. We were wrong. We were wrong to offer this kind of advertising. Um, and he had a true change of heart. He was known as the, the father of organized advertising in America. So out of all this fiasco, BBBs across America were born, individual better business bureaus across the country. There's over 100 of us um, that are systemized. We're in your community. We're local. We're talking to businesses. We're not a government regulator. We're not like the FTC. Uh, we are you know, separate from that. We are private nonprofits. So out of this whole situation, we seek to find the truth in advertising um, and in whatever it looks like online or in print. Again, we are private, not for profit, 501c6. Um, we, we act like a chamber of commerce in a sense. We are like a dues organization as well. Um, but we offer non-biased profiles on businesses in our communities. What does that mean? We are a review site. More than 4 million people come to BBB across the country to find a provider, a service, uh, look up the rating for a business. We offer complaints and reviews. Obviously, you know that we can complain about the BBB. Um, but all this is free of charge. Uh, we offer charity reports, meaning we, re we review nonprofits. We offer ad reviews. If something doesn't look right in a newspaper or TV ad, we investigate. Uh, for our accredited members, we offer dispute resolution or non-binding arbitration between consumers and the businesses. So it's like a step before you go to a lawyer, any legal action. Uh, we provide mediation. We want both parties to help resolve their problem issue before it gets to some kind of legality. Finally, we're a go-to source for the media. When scams appear, we're usually on TV or radio with our scam tracker tool. Uh, people report suspicious calls. They're getting IRS calls. They're getting social security government calls all the time. So people come to us and say, here's what we got. Here's the number, investigate. So we do have a seat at the table with our law enforcement partners like Attorney General, the FBI, FTC, and other agencies. Um, finally, very important to note, a business does not have to be an accredited business to be a part of the BBB. Um, you get a free presence. If you're in business at least six months, you don't have any government action on you, then you have a presence on BBB.org. You have a business, you have a, pro, uh, excuse me, a profile. So just know that it's, not, um, it's, it's important to know you don't have to be an accredited business to be listed on our website. All right, so what has this pandemic taught us? A whole lot. It taught me that I have ugly floors at the house. I've been staring at my floor for the past four months and thinking, I got to change this. I, I need a new floor. So we're at home a lot more. Um, so we did, we did have some floor work, by the way. Uh, more people are online. More people are turning to buying things online, getting things delivered. More people are just spending more time consuming information online. So that's just a given. Uh, reviews are paramount, meaning we're taking a little bit more time to find out who's trustworthy and who's not. We're taking the extra, we're doing our homework, we're doing our research. And if your business truly hasn't met up the expectations online, if your reputation precedes you online, then you're probably gonna miss out on some future growth or business. So those three things, but on top of that, if your goal is to grow or keep your business solvent during this time, then your plan has to include online reputation, digital reputation. Um, you need to manage that and improve that. And we'll give you some steps before we run away here about how to, how to do that. Um, before we go any further, what do we mean by trustworthy? Well, I can't tell you how to be trustworthy. I can't teach that in a class. I can't demonstrate that, but I can tell you a few things that uh, our consumers tell us that they, they consider trustworthy. As. Trust. They trust the business. They always advertise honestly, meaning you never you know stretch the truth. You always tell the truth. Um, you honor your promises. Be transparent. You're responsive. You're always trying to guard the privacy of your client's information, meaning cyber attacks happen a lot. What are you doing to help prevent that? And embody integrity. Again, I can't teach this. I can't tell you how to be integrity, integrity, be an integritist person, but I can tell you those things. If you do these eight bubbles, um, it'll lead you to being a trustworthy business. And if you try your best to do all these, you are uh, invited to be a, become a member of the Better Business Bureau. So these eight things are what our consumers have told us over a hundred years 
that will equal a trustworthy business. I'm sure everybody in the room already does this already. So there shouldn't be any doubt that Laredo is a great place to do business, by the way. So it's a beautiful area. And I think sharing the border, the border mentality, you have both the best of both worlds. Um, so we love Laredo in, in so, so many words. Um, you guys are awesome. I'm trying to mess my screen here, get going. Um, influence is that big I word I told you about at the beginning. Influence is, is incredible. Um, there's a bunch of ways you can get influence, meaning you can be in a power position, position of power, like city council, you can be a president of an association, you could just have 30 years of experience. All those things mean influence. Uh, but I'll tell you, it's truly impactful in, online. 75% of sales are word of mouth. What does that mean? It's a referral. Um, you talk to your aunts, your tias, you talk to your friends, and if they recommend a business, that three out of four times you're going to go to that business because they command influence. They're people close to you. So think about that. 75% of sales happen because of word of mouth. That's huge. How can you get in that conversation? Um, that's the, the golden question. How do you get into that conversation? Your online reputation will help you get there. 88% um, of consumers who have seen a review claim that it influenced their buying decision. That's almost nine out of 10 people. They saw a review and they said, I came here because I saw you guys online and you had a great review or you had a great rating. So that's why I'm here. Um, important, very important. You have to know what your businesses are look like online. And finally, 85% of consumers read up to 10 reviews before they trust a business. I'm that guy that likes to see a mix of bad and good reviews, <clears throat> meaning I get skeptical if I see a business that has maybe 30 reviews and they're all good, they're all 100%. I'm a little skeptical, I'm a little leery about that, but I say that because I'm a, I'm a, I'm a skepticist at heart. I like to read, review, read reviews. If your business doesn't have any, if you don't have an online footprint at all, I'm suspicious as well because I, are you trying to hide something? Um, so it's important to maintain some kind of presence. You know what it looks like. It's not a runaway account. Um, there's review sites all over the place. I won't, there's about 300 that I know of. I won't name them. I'll name the big ones, Angie's List, Google, Facebook, Home Advisor, True Advisor, BBB, many, many others. But again, you need to know what your your customers are saying about you online. That's how your business can recognize the influence. How to get the influence, again, is the, the key metric we want to run away with today. Again, how are you considered influential? Well, like I mentioned, you're successful. You, you've you been in Laredo for 30 years. Um, you, you're the top three provider of a service or product here. You command influence. Status or power, again, do you serve on city council? Are you a leader in a government? Are you aligned with people who have influence? That's another way you can be uh, influential. Number three, experience. If you have 30 years in the business, if you have 15 years doing accounting or tax work, hey, you've got influence. You already know you have experience doing the work. Um, number four, relationship. If you are in a traditional business, I know a family business that was handed down from 1880 in, in San Antonio. Um, just because the name of the business, they have that name, that the relationship, the family business legacy carries on. That's influence. And finally, credibility commands influence. Your brand or your logo, when you drive by McDonald's, you should know what you feel when you see that the golden arches. Um, that demonstrates your business is trustworthy to handle issues. You know you're going to get a chicken, chicken nuggets at any McDonald's. They're going to be pretty good. Hopefully they're good. Um, but you always stand by your work and your good products and your legitimate force. So if you have none of the top four, if you're not successful, if you don't have the experience, if you don't have a position of power, if you don't have a relationship, at least you can command the, the fifth one, credibility. You can just be a credible person, business that'll help you be influential in the market. Um, some of the easiest ways to get there, I'll tell you the six A's, agree to everything in writing. Very important. You got to have written contracts. I ran into so many businesses in our office at BBB saying, listen, we have a dispute with a person. Um, we agreed to some things, you know, talking about it. It's like, where's the contract? Where's the thing in writing? You need to have this thing in writing. So make sure you agree to everything, even along the way, if you make a correction or an addition or something, or you take something away, make sure it's noted. It, the consumer agrees to it, signs off on it. Everything is there in writing. That's the easiest way to make sure you're credible in your stance. Number two, abide by the applicable regulations, meaning are you registered to do work in the county of Webb, in the city of Laredo, in Texas, or in America? Make sure you have the regulations, you are registered, you belong to, you know, the what you need to be, the tax, the taxing identity. All that has to be in place. So just make sure you're abiding by any regulations. Do you need a, a license to provide the service, like, say, you know, roofers, electricians? 
advertise honestly. This is just a given. You can't tell everybody you're the best in the business. I mean, that's kind of stretching it a little bit. You need to say, based on the Laredo Morning Times, Reader's Choice, we were voted 2019 best plumber in Laredo or best whatever. And that's advertising with facts. So advertise honestly. You can't say we have the lowest price in Laredo. Um, do you really? Have you done the research? Uh, have you gone out there and, and done and said, yes, I, I do have the lowest prices in Laredo? So advertise honestly, as honest as you can be. Uh, number four, answer any and all feedback. You got to be responsive. If you have that runaway account, nobody likes to see the business online that isn't responding to reviews or complaints. Um, you need to at least be answering saying, yes, we agree. Yes, you did have a marketplace transaction. It didn't go well. We're going to help make it right. Just make sure you're answering that feedback. Number five, ask for recommendations. In fact, this should be like a, a um, suggest, encourage recommendations. Don't just ask, actually get out there and put a laptop in front of your consumer and say, listen, will you help review our service today? Here's the website. It's already set up. Just give us a great, give us a review and we'll leave it at that. Um, really press for recommendations and reviews. That'll help you. Number six, address the honest attempt to make it right. This is, this is my golden takeaway. We deal with businesses and complaints all day at BBB. And if the business doesn't try to offer some kind of um, you know, alleviance, some kind of uh, uh, try to help help the consumer understand their position, offer a discount, maybe you know help to correct the problem. They addressed an honest attempt to make it right. Now, sometimes you can fire a bad customer. The customer just wants a freebie. They want to trash the business. They want to walk away with free services for their friends and themselves. And that's not that's not a legitimate you know resolution. We want to help make it right. We want the business to say, look, we stepped up. We tried to make it right. We were honest about everything. And we tried to help out. So um, at the very least, you can say, you know what, uh, we tried to we tried to help. We tried to make it right. So those six things will help you the fast track to building credibility in, in your business. Any questions up to this point? Anything that, you're, um, that you saw that you didn't recognize or you need more clarity on? I'm not reviewing the chat, ladies. I uh, can't see it right now. But I'm, I'm keeping an eye on the chat. We haven't um, received any questions. I do encourage everyone. I know we have, I, I see that um, some of our participants are in the retail, hospitality, nonprofit industry. Please feel free to um, post any questions that you might want to touch base with um, Jason um, pertaining to your industry. Perfect. Yes, please feel free. Any questions, especially if it relates to your business, I'd love to to chime in and get specific with you. So where do we go for reviews? Well, this is pretty paramount across the country, maybe not in Laredo or San Antonio or Texas, but we do turn to BBB a lot. 25% of respondents say they go to Better Business Bureau, Better Business Bureau, look for that letter grade, that A, B, C, or D, um, or the F rating. We go to Amazon. Amazon's a huge force in reviews, obviously. Google has done some great work with reviews. Yelp for businesses. I see a lot of restaurants do Yelp. Company websites, um, consumer reports, and Facebook and Angie's List. Notice where in the middle you see that company websites at 11%. People don't visit, don't, I mean, let me rephrase that. People will go to a company's own website less than they'll go to Google, Amazon, BBB, Yelp. That tells us that, I mean, you can put whatever you want on your website. That's you telling your customers what you want. You, you command influence from there, but people will go to other third-party review sites before they come to your website most times. So it's important to know what you look like on the, all those websites for sure, but um, just know that people will go to third parties and seek others' uh, recommendations before they come to your own uh, website. Uh, the referrals, I talked about this, old school dad, um, he ran a gas station for many years and tire shop, and he built his business on referrals, word of mouth, um, he wanted to make it to that dinner time conversation or, you know, where the family sits around the dinner table. I had a great experience at this gas or the whatever. That's the golden goose of referrals. If you can make it to that dinner table or if you can make it to that neighbor to neighbor talking across the fence, watering their grass, they're talking about a great business experience. You want to get to that position. How do you get there? Well, that's family and friends. We trust our family. We trust our friends. We trust if we're going to find a doctor that we want to trust, we turn to our family and friends first. Who do you go to? Online reviews right in the middle towards the top, a little button about 3.8. All this are still above the average. So online reviews are huge. We're right there up there with family and friends. That should tell you a lot. Rating sources right next to it. So that's like your BBB, like your Google, like your Facebook. Below that, you start getting to some crazy, crazy land territory. You see, we have newspapers, online ads, social media, TV, radio, ouch. A lot of broadcast partners have 
have trouble keeping trust because again, there's a lot of stretch, stretchy truth, truth in advertising, Coca-Cola, think back to that poster. Um, what are we saying about our businesses on broadcast outlets? Uh, we trust them less than we trust our own family and friends or inner circle. That makes sense. Just know that um, people are turning to online sites a whole lot more. We really want you to, to pay close attention to what your, your reputation is looking like on those online sites for sure. Uh, so that's the power of the referral. Case study number one, don't be this business. <laughs> uh, if you're in the hospitality, uh, you mentioned we do have a few, some folks in the hotel hospitality. Uh, never tell somebody to, leave, never persuade somebody to leave a good review. And the, ba the back end of that is never dissuade someone to leave a bad review. Don't penalize them if they're gonna leave a bad review. Case in point, this hotel chain, not in Laredo, um, threatened to fine people on the bill when they left the, the hotel. Uh, they stuck some fine print in their checkout documents that says, we will stick you with a $500 fine if you leave a negative review. That is huge. That's bad. Not surprisingly, there was backlash. This happened about uh, 10 years ago. Not surprising. They currently have a 1.5 rating on Yelp. Uh, because of it, they're dishonest. Uh, people you know, don't want to be told what to, you know, to say about the business, meaning you can't tell somebody, hey, make sure and say good things about us on, on, on online, okay? That's you leave a bad taste in consumer's mouth when you do that. So case study, don't tell people how to leave reviews. I'll review how I want to review. Um, you just provide good customer service, a good experience. You just try to make it right and we'll go from there. Um, just a good starting point for businesses not to tell people how to leave reviews. And Jason, if I, if I may add, and I'm not sure if this happens to you or to some of our participants, but the power of just one bad review you know, a lot of time I feel consumers, they can read 10 good reviews, but it only takes that one bad review to um, change their mind, you know? Exactly. That, that's, that's horrible. That's the power of online. It takes that one review. And I'll add on to that. Thank you for clarifying. I'll add on to that. The best way to help turn the conversation is you respond, you make it right. At the very end of our presentation, I have a good um, case to study to tell you how to do that. How to turn that review back around and flip the script. So yes, it could take one bad review, but don't let it hang out there and make sure you know where it's at. And then you can respond and help make it right. That way, the next person that sees that can see, oh, they did a good job trying to make it right and they addressed it. So yes, thank you for, for bringing that up. User generated content. What is this? Again, this is your own clients and consumers leaving their own reviews. This is happening without your, without your blessing. This is happening whether you like it or not. Um, all these websites, all these, you know, uh, review sites, they have a presence, they have a profile on you, whether you've seen it, whether you've claimed it, whether you know it's there, um, you need to be at least cognizant, you need to be aware that it's there. Um, again, UGC is it's called user generated content. This is your own clients developing their own content. If you don't have a profile on Urban Spoon, um, your customer is probably going to create one for you, they'll probably leave a bad review. Urban Spoon picks it up, they find your location, they make a profile based on that. So same thing with all these other sites. If you don't know what that is saying about you, um, then you need to go and claim that listing right away and know what, what it looks like and set up notifications. That way you can, you know, when the next review comes in, you can respond to it and you'll know it's there. Um, it's a full-time job, by the way, to make sure all of your, your reputation is good on all these sites. Case study number two, 74% of consumers, that's three out of four consumers, have read a fake review in 2020. It's not always easy to spot, by the way. They're hard to spot. Um, and I say fake review, what does that mean? It's, it's a person or a company that sells a service that tries to build your reputation. You pay somebody to say good things about you. And that's, that's a no-no. A lot of hotels, um, I'll, I'll mention Marriott back in before 2010, got in trouble for doing that. They were paying participants uh, to say good things about staying at the hotel, even though they never stayed at the hotel. Um, there are services that provide this to businesses, and we tell you to steer away from that as much as you can. Um, we really don't want you to, to pay somebody to say good things. Case in point, there's two different reviews. I won't read the whole thing, but it's hard to tell which one's a fake review and which one's a real review. If you can look at it, they're both pretty meaty. They both have a lot of information. It would seem like this person really stayed at the hotel on both occasions, but um, for time purposes, I'll tell you the number. the second one is the fake one. Um, it's not easy to spot, by the way. Some, some key takeaways you can tell, um, they keep calling it the James Chicago Hotel, the James Chicago, the James Chicago, they keep referring to it. It's like a copy and paste. Um, they don't just say the hotel, the James, 
the James Hotel. They don't they don't clarify as much as they as they want to. They just kind of copied and pasted James Chicago over and over. Um, it's beautifully written, and again, it's hard to tell. But this is a manipulated review on the bottom, and the top one is a real review. So it's hard to tell what are what are the fake reviews. And I'll tell you that because it, it's again we're playing a, a hard game, especially in the media. I do see a chat question we came through. Let's see. I see it. Can you tell us a good way to check our web citations and make bulk updates? So again, notifications on all these sites. If you at least visit all these websites once, claim your listing. Uh, Google My Business, a GMB is one, one instance where you probably have a listing that you haven't claimed yet. And somebody will, like a scammer will come along and claim it for you. Once you claim that listing on all these sites, you get your email, you put in your email address, you get notified when an update has happened, when something moves on your review, when you've gone up or down, when you get a review, it's a good way to keep tabs of what's going on. I put them in a folder, uh, reviews folder on your on your email inbox. That way you can tell, I'm gonna review that folder once every three or four days, once every day to make sure that I'm up to date, caught up on what these people are saying about me on all these websites. Bulk updates, uh, again, it's it's tough to do, it's tough to recommend bulk updates because again, you're, you're, you're kind of like a spray and pray approach. You're spraying one update among many websites or among many services, but um, sometimes it's not a good idea. I'll tell you why in a few minutes about why you shouldn't um, strive to make bulk updates. You go individual one by one. It's the easiest thing I can tell you uh, for sure. I'll get to that uh, specific bulk update question in just a few minutes. Okay. Case study three is the last one. Uh, Try not to automate those reply posts. This is an example of kind of a bulk update thing. You kind of set an auto reply. Like when you go away on vacation, you, you leave a voicemail greeting. It says, hey, I'm not in the office. I'm away on vacation, but thanks for, for calling us. This is kind of the same thing, but it's for social media. And it's a no-no uh, if you do it the wrong way. Um, American Airlines did this back in, uh, I believe it was 2012, 2013. Um, and they, their re auto response says, Thank you for your support. We look forward to a bright future as the new American. And that's that's not a good thing because the person that was that had a complaint, a response, was a bad response. Um, they were complaining about the business. So you're not going to thank them for the support, obviously. They don't support you. So that was kind of a bad reply post. So they learned from that. Obviously, they got scarred. But um, it, it just, you just need to be aware that when you try to automate things too much, it can work against you. So it's best just to go individually one by one and respond appropriately because not everybody's going to be a supporter. Um, you should they, you should probably reward that and say thanks for your feedback. Um, we look forward to serving or to being the best as uh, the new American uh, Airlines. And when you say thanks for your support, that kind of doesn't look right. So in so few words. So yeah, automating things, bulk updates. It's kind of the same situation. You want to just take it website by website support by support. If you want to leave something general, make it as general as you can for an automated reply. But I, if I'm in your shoes, I would not automate replies. I would just simply have the notifications ready to go just in case. Um, so I hope that clears up a little bit. Try not to automate too much before you, um, before you go into business online. So how do we do this? How do we boost our reputation? What's the, what's the takeaways? What should we start doing today? Well, first, locate the action. Find out where it's happening. Is it is it online? Do you, do you have to go to Yelp if you don't own a, own a restaurant? Do you have to be on all these sites? Well, I would argue yes, but just find the big ones, the major ones. List all the major sites that you know are a part of your, your, your industry. Um, get the current status. Find out, you know, take pictures, take screenshots of what they look like, and then work to, to identify which ones you need to, to respond to. Get your resources together. Do you need to get a team? Do you need to hire a professional to help you? Um, and that will help you create that monitoring and response process. It's not hard. It's just tedious. Does that make sense? It's not real. It's not hard to do, but you have to do it. So at what level are you going to do it? Are you going to do it once a week, once a month, maybe a little bit more than that, maybe three times a month. Anyway, so you have to locate where the action is taking place. Um, you know, the big ones I, I just showed for you in that slide before BBB, Amazon, Google, you know, Facebook, and then it goes down to Yelp and Angelus. It just depends on what, what business you're in. Engage. This is it. Engage. Start getting the dialogue going. Don't don't not engage. Does that make sense? It by you not saying anything says a lot about you. By you not responding says a lot about the business. Do I want to do business with somebody who doesn't even recognize they're being complained upon online? It's a runaway account. It's a profile that nobody checks. That that hurts. So 
Make sure you're engaging with the feedback. Make it easier for consumers to share the feedback. I'll tell you how to do this. Um, there's an air conditioning provider here in San Antonio that before they leave, they always pop a, a, a laptop, I'm sorry, a, a tablet right in front of me. Every time, every service call, they say, okay, uh, I'm gonna go put my stuff in the truck, uh, Mr. Mesa, but before I leave, I'd like to get your you know, honest response. I get graded on how good I have service I provided. Here's our tablet I'm gonna put in front of you. Um, can you please you know, rate, there's five questions, give me the stars or however you think it went, and then I'll go put my stuff, I'll be back. It takes you a minute. That is easy. They put everything right in front of you before, before they give me the bill, before they stick me with the bill, they say, okay, no problem. Uh, here's a quick, quick, take one minute to give us some feedback. They made it very easy for me to give feedback. They almost demand it before they leave. Okay, so that's that's making it incredibly easy. Um, ask your consumers to share reviews on these major sites. You know, before you leave, send them a text message. Hey, hope we did a good job. Uh, if you can, we you know we'd appreciate a review on Google or Yelp or BBB, whatever it looks like. Your important sites. Um, now, Better Business Bureau does provide tools to make it easy to ask for feedback. We have a request a quote. We have a reviews website. There are solutions you can employ. You can pay a company to help you get the reviews, not the good reviews. That's not that company that, that writes them for you. It's the company that reaches out to your consumers. You give them the email list in your, in your database. They go out and do research. They do call outs. They, you know, they text message, whatever it looks like. There's tools out there, not just from BBB, but from other providers to help you make that Get it, get it done. Keep it simple. You don't want 20 questions. You don't want to take a test after you, you, you have an engagement. So keep it three to four questions real quick, maybe five stars, however you want the rating to look. And feedback via text is very effective. We're all, we're all addicted to our phones, raising my hand here. So if you can send a text message with a link to review site or even just have it right there in the text, that's the best method you can, you can help. Uh, always respond. Again, always say something. Always respond to your reviews. Be positive, professional, only the facts, just with the dragnet. I think it's an old school TV show, so it's just the facts. Um, individualize. This is what I mentioned. Individualize every response. Thank you, Mrs. Garcia, for your service today. I know it, your experience, your feedback. I know we fell short of that expectation. Um, listen, we're going to, if you call me directly, we'll try to, you know, address it, make it right. Create that win-win solution whenever possible. You know, it's not everybody's wrong. Customer's always right. We've heard about that. Sometimes it can be wrong. I'll, I'll just sneak that in. Sometimes it can be wrong, but you want to create the win-win and make it appear like you're solving the problem. Be a problem solver online. Never talk negative about the customer. I mean, you really don't want to, that to have play out online because it's there forever, for a very long time. Um, bring the A-team. Again, do you, have, do you have people on your team that could help you? Do you have you know, younger people that are more accustomed to playing on social media? Do they have accounts? Maybe you can add that notch or find someone, a team that a team member that can help you respond um, and that can kind of coach you along. That's okay. We, they're the pros. They're the, they live during the social media, during the reviews era. I grew up on, like I said, in the early eighties, when dad, we were running our business, we didn't have to worry about going online, managing reputation. We just did it through good service and shaking hands and making sure people were referred to us. So uh, again, people that grew up in this age can probably help you along. So bring the A team. Um, develop your personality. If you want to see how people really do this very well, look at Wendy's. Wendy's has a beautiful online review solution. They, they, they have a, a voice, a personality. They attack Burger King. <laughs> they attack their competitors. They go out and say, you know, we're not the, we, you know, we didn't admit the chicken sandwich. We just perfected it. And that's Chick-fil-A. That's that personality. So see if you can develop that. Um, it goes a long way. Collaborate on those tough reviews. Um, you're going to have them. You're in business. You're going to have a negative experience, customer experience at some level. Um, so get together before you respond. What's working? What's not working? Discuss that with your A-team. It could be a business. It could be a freelancer you reach out to. Um, just make sure you have the A-team. Let your love show. This should be a song. I think it was. Um, convey a positive image professionally. I mentioned that. Share just the facts. Put your business as the go-to business. You probably aren't in the top two top three providers, maybe you are. Um, the way to get there is to say, you know what, we always, we strive to make it right. We offer 100%, you know, uh, customer feedback or experiences. We have a A plus rating on BBB. Put yourself, promote that, promote that your business is responsive and write out your responses. I, I'm an old school, I have a tablet right here to write on and I actually write out everything before I respond. Doing that kind of, you know, puts the pause button. It says, okay, take a breath. 
How am I going to respond? I'm not going to get out there and go crazy online and start typing my response as the business owner. So that kind of helps you take a step back and, and really learn about what you want to say. And there are times you got to take it offline, friends. There's some complaints that are, you really don't want this to happen online. Um, try your best to take it offline. In other words, steer the customer, say, I appreciate your, your feedback. Listen, call me directly or email me and we'll, you know, we'll resolve this. And some people don't want that. Some, <laughs> some consumers are just really pressing. They really want to trash your business. Some ex-in-laws go on there and trash businesses or tell people to say bad things. And it happens. It plays out. Um, as much as you want it to, to be taken off a uh, bad review, you know, services like Yelp and others won't re remove the, the, the review. It's tough. Uh, I will tell you that BBB has gone a step above. We learned about this and we only post reviews when a true marketplace interaction has happened. Meaning if it's an in-law that you that's trying to trash your business, uh, we wanna make sure that that review is legitimate. We won't post it until we know that they had an, an, a true marketplace interaction with you. Until that happens, we don't post the complaint. So saying that, um, you're gonna have these complaint people that wanna continue to trash you online. Just do your best to take it offline. Offer, you know what, this is they're gonna require us to get specific on your account. Um, it's best if we take this online. And that when it's, that's when it gets personal. They're, they're, they're using bad words, profanity. There's real delicate, sensitive details online. So try our best to move it offline. Uh, we got only got a few more slides left. Trust the negative Nancy. She's out there. I think she's called Karen now. Um, in some situations, you know, you're going to have the negative reviews and that's okay. Um, it, it's, and, and that's it. You really can't make it right after that. And you're going to have those. Just know that 82% of people are looking for those negative reviews. They're, they're like me. They're skeptical when they see a perfect 5.0 score. I'm like, mm, they're doing something wrong. Or is that truly right? So you can have a 4.7 rating. That's okay. That's that's actually good. You should shoot for like a 4.7 out of five stars. And that's okay. 68% um, of customers trust reviews more when they see a mix of good and bad. That's me. Um, again, it's going to happen. Shoot for a healthy mix of bad versus good. This demonstrates you're committed to solving problems and nobody's perfect. Uh, seal the deal. 70% of people will leave a review when they're asked to do it. Ask for that review. Um, having a, at least five reviews results in a really good purchase likelihood four times. Um, customers spend a little bit more when they know you have those positive reviews and displaying reviews can increase conversion. That last one I want you to pay attention to, displaying your, your reviews. Um, if you have reviews on a, a third party, say let's just say Angie's List, Take those reviews and promote them. Use them on your website. Now, you probably have to be a member of Angie's List to do that. Same thing with BBB. But you can, you can promote them on your own website. You can increase the conversion rate big time. Um, I'll tell you that uh, this is a good thing. I was in traffic one day, and I was sitting at a stoplight, and <laughs> I saw a business had an actual review on their vinyl wrap of their, the back of their trucks. That's great. I'm sitting behind this guy for at least 30 seconds. It gives me a second to see a, an honest feedback review written on the vinyl wrap on the back. And that's included on their, their business logo, their, they had a BBB logo, all that. It, it's great. Promote it, display those reviews, tell others what others have said about you. Does that make sense? It's not enough to just have good reviews, promote those, say, look, we have a A plus rating on BBB. We're accredited. Look, we have a 5.0 on or a 4.7 on Facebook. Look, we have this promote it, actively seal the deal by doing that. And listen, at the end of the day, I know it's a lot, um, especially for the, the small business owner, the micro business owner, it's a full-time job. Um, you got forums, you got blogs, you got news websites, all the social media websites to worry about, and you got to attract those. You got to have a grasp of what your online rep says about you. So, um, but people talk about your brand all the time. Try to monitor those. It's a full-time job, but there are reputation management services you can hire. Some of those are accredited with BBB. Uh, depending on your business, you may find they're worth the money, but we always recommend you check the reputation of the services, check the reputation of the reputation management companies, make sure they're not manipulating fake reviews on your behalf and they're doing it right. Again, social media, get that plan going. If you're not on social media, I would, last year I would say it's okay. This year, I'm, it's a totally different tune. I'm singing a different song. I'm like, you know what? We need, to, you need to have some kind of presence on social media. Um, identify the sites that work best. Not everybody's going to have an Instagram or a TikTok account. Only create those sites if you can manage it. You know, don't bite off more than you can chew kind of situation if you don't have a team ready to go. Um, 
And again, it, it's about visibility. It's about growth. People are going to visit the website before they step into your business or pick up the phone to call you. Um, it's simple. Set some goals. We want to add 10 followers a week. I want to get 10 likes per post. We want to display one review a week, whatever that looks like. And again, measure the impact. Does it, did it happen to be convert to a new customer or not? Is it changing my perception online? What's the impact you want to have? All right, the last two things I mentioned, social proof and social good. These are some things you can do um, pretty quick right now. This is that um, idea that customers make their purchase based on what others are saying about you. There's that, that red box you see on a pair of earbuds. They have 267 customer reviews. They have answered 184 questions. They have almost five stars, four and a half. That is being called out. They are telling others, look, here's the proof that we're doing some good work. They're, by showing the number of current customers, reviewers, how many questions they answered, they make it easy for their customers to see what other people think about them. In doing so, you establish a level of trust with new customers. Um, you reinforce your own credibility as, as a, a product or a service. So we simply assume that if the majority of people are doing something, have done something or believe in something, there's probably a good reason why. It's called social proof. No matter what arguments you're gonna use on your, your landing page, your website, your ads, your prospects will still believe what other customers are saying, okay? Before they believe you. Again, people are going to other websites before they go to their own website 11% of the time. We, we saw that stat. So your prospects, your customers, your future customers will be, still believe your other customers more than you. Okay, that's that's huge. Uh, I'm sorry to say that it's it's the the new millennium. It's the new new way of thinking. Old school dad would not agree. That's okay. <laughs> Uh, social good. This is the second social thing I mentioned. This this is where a brand gets really steps above, steps up and says, you know what, we support a cause or a charity in our community. We're already having to give back. You probably give to United Way already. You probably give to St. Jude. I don't know whatever charity. But a social good campaign um, is a bigger idea. It's a movement. It's simply a reaction to a relevant topic. On the right hand side, you see Nike. Um, they really believed in Colin Kaepernick in 2017. If you remember, Colin Kaepernick was a famous um, they're still, I guess, a famous NFL quarterback. He took a stance. He took a hard stance and he kneeled at the, the national anthem before the game was played. NFL people, his players, a lot of consumers, they penalized him. They thought, well, you shouldn't be doing that. So Nike rolled the dice and said, we're going to support this guy. We're going to put him on our ads. We have, you know, his products now, all that. They took a big gamble. And you know what? In, in so few words, it paid off they saw a 15% increase since that ad ran a two week span. The date revealed that he was the, the company's 30th anniversary of the Just Do It campaign. Um, there was a boycott against Nike for making that happen, but it gave them a $6 billion, BBB, $6 billion boost. Their stock soared. It's because not because they did it for his stance, but they believed in somebody that did something. Um, so it, if you do something, make sure it's not on such a grand scale. It doesn't have to be polarizing like Nike did. Just stay away from politics and religion if you can. Do something that your company believes in and show it. Show that you volunteered at the food bank. Show that you did this. Um, I did see a stat that 70% of millennials will pay more for your product if it shows that you stand, stood behind an issue they cared about. So very important to do, do find the social good in Laredo. Find out what you can support and offer that and promote it. And you might just see a great return on the other side. Finally, influencers, um, you can use them. It's just people, you're, you're paying people to say things about you, basically an endorsement. Um, you can ask your customers to say something about you, but don't try to sway them. Don't try to say, say some good things about us. Don't do that. Just say, we'd like to pay you for, you know, for saying something about us. We'll give you 10% off, whatever that looks like, but just make sure you disclose that on your website. And that's has to be honest. They have to be an actual customer of yours. It can't be somebody you pay just out of the blue. And uh, again, finally, here's that customer review. The, this company was hired to install shutters. They failed to city inspections. Uh, they were given six weeks. It was a hurricane season. Uh, please help. I can't get another company to do this. Fix the problem. That's an honest review. That's a person that has a problem from the company that installed these hurricane shutters. Uh, don't do this. The company responded pretty bad. They said, listen, you're ignorant. Uh, although it didn't meet your liking, you're extremely exaggerating. It's obvious you want to hurt the integrity of the business. You're absurd, outright, all these bold, bad, bad, bad. Again, don't, don't penalize, don't go, get out and say this. What they could have said, dear consumer, look, this is what we did. Here's the dates, the documents. Here's what we came out to do. Unfortunately, there were delays. The city held us back out of our control. 
we apologize. We're going to provide 20%. We're going to try to help. Um, and this is what we've done in the past. We offer over 100 satisfied customers to give us that five-star rating. So they're trying to expedite, expedite. You know, this is what we will do. That's just another way to respond. So to, to summarize, how will this help? Maybe you can start a weekly process of reviewing the reviews, reviewing the reviewers. Um, honor those influencers. You've got some good customers. Make sure you pay them back. Say, listen, you've been with me 10 years. Um, you know, can we get on a referral program? I'll give you, you know, $10 for every person you bring back to the business. Start a give back program. Think Nike. Uh, can you do something for Laredo and promote that and show that you're a good steward of the community? And then seek help. If you can't do it alone, you know, there's companies, there's services and people that can help you capture those experiences. Um, that is it for me. Um, if you need questions, I'll answer any qu specific chat questions. Um, again, you can reach out to me directly. Facebook, we do have a podcast. We did feature a Laredo business on the podcast this week, um, United Solutions. Um, we have a Twitter. We have an Instagram. Again, just reach out. And we're here to help. Thank you. Um, I have actually a couple of questions. I don't know if uh, Miriam, if you're looking at the chat, maybe uh, collecting some of the ones that are coming uh, from the participants. But thank you so much. The presentation was excellent. I uh, wanted to ask a couple of things. With the Better Business Bureau, and, and yes, I, I think of it as a directory and you go to it and you can trust that. Have you seen any trends of particular industries that are kind of leading um, you know, or take, taking up maybe some more space that they weren't taking up space in the directory, like a, a kind of who are maybe the leading industries that you see that are trending? Sure. Um, the most impactful industries right now are obviously service providers. Um, we're talking roofers, plumbers, uh, electricians, anybody that uh, provides on-site services to a home or a business uh, is getting a lot of traction, a lot of review, should be paying attention, obviously. But um, it, it's a good chance for the small guy, for the small micro business, one or two employees that has contractors, not full timers, that can really go a long way and beat the good guy, beat, beat the big guys for the competition. Okay. They can go above and say, you know what, we don't have, we're not the biggest, but we provide excellent service. Here's what we do. So service provider industry does a lot. So BBB. You see them taking advantage of it and, and jumping on board and, and getting some results. Oh yes, oh yes, they need to maximize that for sure because it's it's a hidden tool. It's a hidden gem. The big people, the big, bigger companies um, have figured it out and they know how to steer the conversation online. So the smaller guys can spend a few extra hundred dollars or whatever and help boost that reputation, have a good campaign, a good PR campaign and really get some good results and, you know, beat the, 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 the bigger guys down. Cool. One of the things as you were talking, I was thinking about, you know, uh, the referral um and everybody has, you know, fantastic ways to get referrals. I don't know if maybe in, in your expertise or from being, you know, uh, in the business and hearing what is like the most outrageous thing that you've heard a very happy customer say about, uh, you know, maybe one of, of your members that, wow, they went really above and beyond and this is what they did. Could you share something like that? I think uh, I've seen so many and it's, it's, if you're in food service, it's really hard to, to get, to command a good review, a good score, because you have so many people coming in and it could be one undercooked thing could have caused a, a melee of things. So yeah, we've seen so many with uh, our insurance agents. Uh, we all need insurance. We all need to have it at some level. Some have higher. We have insurance agents come in and out of the, of the associate of better business bureau, but uh, people that are really satisfied with their insurance agent for some reason, really go above and beyond. And those agents are rewarding them. They're saying, listen, we have a referral network. Um, if you bring us more business, we'd be happy to give you a discount on your policy, discount on, you know, whatever, and help you out, whatever they're giving, whatever they're doing in the insurance industry, whatever snapshot they're taking, they're, they're having positive effects. So insurance agents, brokers are doing really well. Same with realtors. Um, they don't use BBB as much, but they use the power of the referral big time. They base a lot of their business on referrals, obviously. So, um, it, it's the entrance agents and the realtors for some reason that have the best reviews because those are so personal. You only use, you only buy a house once every, you know, 10 years, like we, right. we do, but those are huge purchases. So I think realtors and entrance agents at this moment are, are doing very well. Right. And I, in our, our business, um, I, I volunteer for the chamber, but I, I help my husband with his legal firm. And we have this concept of, we call it the perfect client life cycle. 
you've got your leads, your sets, your shows, your hires, but the it's the referral that brings it back to the lead. So it's really neat to you know talk about that end of the the stages of of you know that client life cycle is the referral and really it comes down I think you know and as you've mentioned too the foundation is good customer service and responsiveness. Right, you can't beat that with 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 a stick. I mean, all, all day long, as old school dad would agree on this for sure. That it, you know what we we did what we did. We did good experience. We offered good customer service, and yes, we had a bad experience or we had a bad whatever exchange, um, but we made it right. We we tried to make it right. We offered an honest attempt to offer a discount. Uh, we tried to do it for free. Or we didn't say we're going to do it every job for free at this point. I mean, you don't give away the farm, but you try your best, and that's where it ends up with BBB in the complaint office, maybe we're sitting with us saying, you know, they, they didn't try to do anything in the business. Like, wait, hold on. We actually offered some kind of, uh, you know, some kind of assistance on this. So yes, just right. do your best. It's all you can ask for. Right. Just be responsive. We're all human. Miriam. Hi, <laughs> excuse me. Do we have any chats or any extra questions? We don't cut. And, um, I do want to thank Jason. Thank you so much for sharing with us such a valuable information. Um, we'll go ahead and, and, and share your presentation with the people that participated this morning. Um, I want to thank you and I want to encourage everyone to reach out to BBB, um, check out their website, reach out to them. They have a lot of um, good um, resources and tools that um, you can use um, for your business. Thank you so much, Jason. It's always um, great um, connecting with you. Likewise, uh, next time I'm back in Laredo, we'll do this in person and we'll have a cup of coffee uh, and that handshake. <laughs> <laughs> we, hope we can only pray. Thank you yes. so much. Thank you all very much.